in CO2, when you hit uh, 87.8 degrees Fahrenheit, you hit something is the, the critical point of CO2. And it goes in something called the transcritical state, supercritical state, supercritical fluid. And there's no pressure temperature relationship. And so that's probably the biggest, one of the biggest things to know about CO2. But all refrigerants have it. We just never talked about it because the temperatures don't get 160 degrees outside. Well, I mean, no, no. I, I wish when you said your phone thing that I had like a rotary phone right here. I lit up and said, what are you talking about with the phone? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. That would have been good. If I were imagining, just sitting where I'm at, having no experience with it, what I would imagine were giant pipes and levers moving and like like Santa's workshop I thought of when I was a kid. That's what I would expect from CO2, which would almost psych me out of working on it before I ever stepped in the building. That, see, I think that's the problem with somebody going toward that direction. It's an intimidation factor. It's like this is a vastly different type of atmosphere. But what I'm hearing from you is there are differences, but it's not as vast as you might imagine. No, it's like anything. It's new. A lot of people don't like change. You know, that's the thing. It's if you're in residential HVAC, let me put you on an ice machine. How are you going to feel? Have you I ever just lost, on? lost yeah, on or, an or, island or, somewhere? Yeah, yeah, no, or an, yeah, lost on an island, <laughs> or a slushy machine, whatever. It's going to be difficult because you never did it before, right? And it's different. That's the same as CO two. Just a lot of people. I've talked to technicians who've worked on hundreds of systems, installed hundreds of systems. It's easy. They like working on it better than the synthetics, way better. Well, let me, let me ask you this. You know, if you're working on this stuff, would you expect to be getting readouts of all the things that we would take manual pressures and temperatures on? Would you expect to just to kind of have just like a, a highly technical view of something that in residential we would have to be do, doing manually anyway? So this is, this is the, the game changer for CO2. You have to do your job properly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, 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 that's it. I've noticed the change because doing the job, and I, I see this from a lot of technicians who went into CO2 and back in, and they do both uh, synthetics and CO2. They do a more, they do a better job. There's no cutting corners with CO2 because they're a little nervous because of the higher pressure, but oh, yeah. they're pulling the proper vacuums now. Yeah, the tension yeah. is helpful. Yeah. They're doing the proper pressure <laughs> test because, oh, we know it's going to be running at over 1,000 PSI. We better make sure this pressure test holds. People are doing their job <laughs> like that. better. We don't properly. want our non-condensables today. Uh, we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could definitely see that. I, I like, why do you call them synthetics? I don't know. That's because they are a synthetic refrigerant. But the choice of word, I've never heard uh, someone use the word synthetic, although it's perfectly reasonable to use that word. I have never heard it before. I just wondered what the origin was. I don't know. I, I heard it somewhere years ago at Emerson, I'm sure. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist right here. If you want to see our brand new video, click right here. If you want to find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen, click up here. And to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.